The expression of pessimism is, in practice, whinging. Pessimists point to the absurdities, stupidities and atrocities of the world and whinge about them. It's pretty hard not to if you're going to point to the absurdities, stupidities and atrocities of the world. This in the full knowledge that neither this whinging nor the awareness of the absurdities, stupidities and atrocities of the world will do anything at all to end or even impede them. Pessimism is both the acceptance and disapproval of life as shit, and its shittiest element is the impossibility of improving it to a standard optimal for everyone everywhere. Hence whinging. Many will argue that pessimism isn't just whinging, but often a complex and nuanced analysis and critique of very existence. They'll even say that many pessimists have tried to prescribe as well as describe. And all this is true, but since all the analysis and critique will result in something negative, and since the prescriptions of just about everyone, pessimist or not, to improve things have all been failures, it seems to me that all that's left in practice for pessimism is the whinging. If you haven't given up by now, you're still clinging to a scant and faint optimism. Which is your privilege of course, and I'm not telling you not to, I'm just pointing it out. But the real issue with whinging is not the complaining, but a degree of quality. This is the all important point. Anyone can complain about a bad meal from a restaurant, but it takes a kind of artistic quality to compose a no-star review of the restaurant that is so blindingly contemptuous that it becomes entertaining and even enjoyable. Everyone hates whinging per se, but everyone loves it when it's done well, with some degree of dash and style. And more than that, whinging transcends itself when it becomes something artistic. Again, it's an issue of degree, but it's also an issue of talent and imagination. More importantly, it's an issue of connecting emotionally. There are many different ways to express the value of things, but I believe that when it comes to expressing the value of life itself, or the world, or humanity, or any of these big picture abstractions that we humans often refer to, and moreover when it comes to expressing just how negative I and others feel about these abstractions, the best expressions are with works of art, from the plastic arts to the written word to music and cinema and so on. This is because I feel strongly that while rational arguments for the validity of various pessimisms are valid enough, I believe strongly that pessimism is subjective, based on personal biases. And that is because I believe that the kinds of abstractions pessimism deals with are in themselves expressions of personal and collective values. If, for example, we talk about a pessimism of humanity, we are referring to humanity not as it actually is, with the various ways that it can be described more rationally, but in an abstract way that allows us to say what it is we want to say about humanity. If we decide to place a value on humanity, and in pessimism's case a negative value, it is the value statement first that gives us the description of humanity we want to express. And while a negative value of humanity can certainly be expressed in rational terms, it is not completely objectively rational, because it comes from personal biases first. Optimists, or those more neutral, or others with varying views of humanity, have similar abstractions based on their own personal or even shared biases, no less valid as personal biases than the pessimists. And I argue that a more honest and direct way of expressing those biases is aesthetically, with emotional expressions that convey the emotional concepts that pessimists have about big picture abstractions, because they can be easily understood by anyone who encounters them because they are more directly emotional. Thus a movie, for example, that depicts a negative view of humanity can not only be understood more easily by anyone, but also understood as subjective. When pessimism is presented in more rational ways, such as through philosophy, it is presented as if presenting mutually understood facts. But the issue here is that while the facts presented may be demonstrable, the conclusion drawn from these facts, in this case the pessimist conclusion, will always be contested because of other people's personal biases. This is as it should be. But it can, and often does, leave the pessimist more flustered and disappointed when such a conclusion is rejected despite having however many facts to back it up. Whereas, when pessimism is presented artistically, it is understood that it is presented as a biased representation. Thus, it is more honest for both the presenter and any potential receiver, as well as more emotionally direct, and therefore more easily understood in itself. It can, and often does, lead to similar disagreement and rejection, but at least it has the virtue of being honest and direct. 
But this isn't to say that pessimism must be presented as an aesthetic. After all, we're not all artists, and nor should we be. But we are lucky in that there is, in nearly all artistic canons, examples of works that can be pointed to as representing pessimism, and even artists whose whole oeuvre can be regarded as the same, even if the works in question and the artists themselves would not agree. That is because works of art, being free from having to justify themselves rationally, can be accepted in subjectively biased ways as much as they are presented. From the literature of Beckett, Lovecraft, Dostoevsky, Hedayat, Dadzai, Kafka, Blinko, Sartre, McCarthy, Hoylenbeck, Perek, O'Brien, Selby Jr., Pessoa, Bloy, Poe, Camus, Melville, Desade, Bukowski, The Bible, to the visual art of Tucker, Fetakis, Armour, Rothko's Last Works, Miller, Goya, Bruegel, Bosch, Munch, Hopper, Booth, Smart, to the poetry of Voltaire, Larkin, Plath, Shakespeare, Owen, Bukowski again, to the cinema of Bergman, Tippett, Weir, Miller, Von Trier, Lynch, Pasolini, Kubrick, Klimov, Ichikawa, Tarkovsky, to the music of Orff, Wagner, The Tiger Lilies, Rudimentary Punai, Devo, Tom Waits, every second black metal band, every dark ambient project, The Blues. These are just examples from my own meagre knowledge only. There are legions more, famous and barely known. To reiterate, it's not that any of these artists would regard themselves as pessimists per se, or their work, individually or as wholes. But we pessimists can definitely cite their work as glowing examples of the darkness of human experience and expression. As valuable as the defining works of Schopenhauer, Charan, Zapfe, Saltus, Benatar, Mainlander, Gray, Leopardi and so on are to pessimism, isn't it interesting to note that most of them have expressed themselves in various creative and aesthetically pleasing ways, and how those expressions are what remain with us.